to delay marriage in Islam is actually prohibited. Once you know that the two are to get married, you get the nikah done. You're delaying it, you are sinful. Remember this. So people say, we are engaged. The next year I met them, we are engaged. The third year I met them, we are engaged. The fourth year, oh, she fell pregnant, we had to quickly do the nikah. It's happening in society. They were supposed to be married, get the nikah done, even if they are living separately. So what? Who said that as soon as you marry, you have to go to your husband's house? If your father has agreed that no problem, you're still at school, you want to finish your education, get your nikah done and stay at home, don't worry. The day we are finished with your education, four or five years down, inshallah, you can go to your husband's house and we can have a big walima that time, inshallah. No harm. But with us, we say, no, 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 keep it. What am I going to say? Son doesn't have a degree. Son-in-law doesn't have a degree. What am I going to say? No, hold it. No marriage. You must wait. They are already together. They are already together. And who is accumulating the sin? You are a part of it. A part of it. I'm not saying the entire sin. But you are a part of it. Why? You are a stubborn parent. That's what it is. Stubborn. Really stubborn. Take that out. Learn from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu where he teaches us when nikah is confirmed, get it done. When the time of salah comes, fulfill it. When a janazah happens to be in front of you, get them buried. You don't delay a janazah to say, you know what? Uh, let's just wait for one, two years. Put him in the mortuary. Why? You know, more people will come, you know. What are you talking about? That's what you're doing to your daughter. That's what you're doing to your son-in-law. May Allah forgive us. Get the nikah done. Do you fear Allah or do you fear society? Get that nikah done. Don't delay. The two want to get married. Come on. Let it happen. And they don't have to live together. Like I said, they can, tomorrow when he's got a house, he can come ahead. Mashallah. Qualification, degree. Subhanallah. Some of the happiest marriages are to those who have no degree. Trust me. Some of the happiest marriages are to those who have no qualification. The man treats your daughter like she is a queen. He carries her on his back and walks around. Mashallah, a guy with a degree. One wonders, I don't want to say won't do that, but one wonders what he does. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You're talking to me like this? I have a degree. Mashallah, PhD, me PhD. You know, the, he'll tell his wife to call him doctor so-and-so. I have a PhD. You don't address me like that? May Allah forgive us, really. You look at the man, if his deen is good, his character is good, reasonable, responsible person, get him married. How many of our parents had nothing when they got married? 30 years later, they developed wealth. Today, the same parents want a husband who's already rich. He must be rich from the beginning. Give him a chance. Come on, man. When you got married, you couldn't even wear shoes. You only used to move around in slippers. Allahu Akbar, and it took you 20, 30 years to develop wealth. And just because you've got the wealth, your daughter wants to get married. It's not like anyone is shoving it down her throat. And you are just saying no, because perhaps the man doesn't have something. And who said, Allah says, You've chosen the right spouse. If the person is poor, Allah will bless them with his virtue because Allah is the one who owns sustenance. How many people have got their daughters married to wealthy people? Ten years down the line, they lost everything. So it's not to do with wealth, it's to do with the right person.